Greetings AP Calculus BC students, Mr. Record here from Avon High School. We're going to take a look at our example 5 from topic 9.4, all, all about vectors, defining and differentiating vector value functions. Although we're not quite into the calculus aspect, we're getting pretty close. We're still going to recap some of our basic ideas from vectors from trigonometry. Maybe some of you may have seen some of these ideas in a physics course. But this particular problem is going to focus around a brand new way uh, that you can represent vectors in what's called a linear combination form. So let's take a look. So if you recall from the previous video, we started to talk about unit vectors and we we were basically you know under the understanding that a unit vector has a length of one. That's the whole point. And so the unit vector one comma zero or zero comma one are going to be the two most common unit vectors and they're called standard unit vectors and because they're used so often throughout mathematics we give them special names we call them i and j and there is another form k that you can use to denote a, a vector in three dimensions that comes out at the z-axis but we're not going to talk about anything outside of two dimensions here so we know that vector i is just the vector one zero and the vector j is zero one well then we can just use those letters a lot more freely and easier than having to write the full vector 1, 0, or 0, 1 out. So these vectors can be used to present pretty much any vector v. Let's say vector v has the components v1 and v2. Well, if we just simply take those components and multiply them each by the unit vector 1, 0, we can then come up with v1 times the vector i and v2 times the vector j added together. And that's what we call a linear combination combination for i and j. Notice the scalars v1 and v2 are going to be the components of vector v. So if we look at this in a, in a little bit dif different light here in example 5, we're going to let u be the vector with an initial point negative 3, 7 and a terminal point of negative 5, 2. And then we have this vector v that's already written in linear combination form 3i minus 2j. Our job is to write the following as linear combinations of i and j. So for part a, vector u, we can start this process by using basically the same idea that we used when we wrote in component form. You simply take the terminal point, which in this case is negative 5, and you subtract the initial point, negative 3. Now notice I'm doing that for the first components, the v1 components, the x component you can say and all of those or that result I should say will get multiplied by the unit vector i. We'll add to that a similar process with our second components where we start with 2 the terminal value subtract 7 the initial value of the second component and that would be multiplied by the unit vector j. By the time we do a little simplifying here, we end up with negative 2i minus 5j. And that's the linear combination that we sought in part a. Now for part b, we have a brand new vector in town, vector w, defined as 4 times vector u minus 5 times vector v. So we just have a little bit more work to do here. All the while, we're supposed to write this in linear combination form. So as far as vector four, or as far as four times vector u is concerned, well, we already have our vector u here. So we just merely need to take four and multiply it by that vector. Notice this is a scalar multiplier. And then for minus five times vector v, I'll set that up in a similar fashion. Remember vector v was given to us up here as 3i minus j. So all we're going to do is distribute our 4, as you can see. And we're going to distribute this 5, but I'm also going to distribute the negative at the same time. So I have a negative 5 times negative 2, which is a positive 10. That would essentially be multiplying by the unit vector j. And by the time you get to this point, you're going to go ahead and combine your like terms. Your negative 
i minus your 15i do combine for a negative 23 times vector i. And then negative 5j plus 10j is a positive 5j. And that would be your final answer for part b. Actually, I take that back. I do not know how to multiply, apparently. Let's go back to this. I just caught that mistake. 4 times negative 5, that should be a negative 20. Many of you are probably watching the video and saw that and thought, wait a minute, what's, these guys, what's this guy doing? So now if I combine like terms, negative 20j plus 10j is minus 10j, and that's what I want. Like I said, the ij form is just another way to write a vector. For instance, this has nothing to do with this problem, but if I made up uh, a vector, or how about I just use the vector v that was given, 3i minus 2j, that is every bit the same as 3, negative 2 in a vector form, right? These two pieces of notation are perfectly reasonable to use all throughout mathematics. I would say on the AP exam, you could use either or, but what you're going to find out when you take the AP Calculus BC exam is that there aren't a lot of problems that are just really innately attacked by using ideas of vectors. They're more aptly going to be confronted using parametrics because that's really what vectors are. You just simply have a, a, a couple of parametric pieces, right? One that's with your first component and one that's with your second component, essentially. But by and large, either of these notations are going to be acceptable all throughout mathematics. So why do they both have to exist? Well, it just turns out that sometimes when you use the vector notation with the linear combinations i and j, it's just a little bit easier to pull off some of these operations, right? You saw how we just were combining some like terms, just like we do when we're in our algebra classes from middle school. It has that same kind of vibe, and it just makes the calculations a lot easier. The, those same calculations that we perform in calculus, taking derivatives and integrals, become a heck of a lot easier when we write these vectors in these linear combination forms as well. So anyhow, I hope that answers some of your questions about why we use linear combinations. We're going to still continue to use these throughout some of the remaining videos for this particular topic, and I certainly hope that you check those out. Anyhow, thank you for joining, and we'll see you next time.